Hi, everybody. How you doing? Dr. Teresa Phillips here. It is seven o'clock and it is the first time I've had a broadcast in a couple of months or so. And I'm real excited about being able to be on tonight. I want to first of all say thank you to every single person that had been praying for me because I have been in the hospital and I had major surgery, but I'm doing well. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. I think you're awesome. I love you all. You're great. I'm just trying to get things going here. Hubby is at a military event. So I'm not sure where he, if he's going to make it in here tonight or not. But I'm trying. So it's all, it's all good. It's all good. I'm trying to find a way to record this here, but it's not doing it. Hmm. There we are. Yay. Anyway, Dr. Teresa Phillips here from Global Prophetic Voice, Keys in the Prophetic. And tonight I have a powerful word for you. And I know that there's a lot of people praying tonight for the debate between the two parties. So we just pray that God's will would be done there and God's protection would be upon every person. So tonight I want to talk to you about something that's very near and dear to my heart. And that is this season where the king is in the field. This means a great deal to me because many of you know, I have a heart for the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so tonight, as we get into this word that God gave me, I just want to encourage you to participate. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to say something. Um, those of you that are on Facebook, I just want you, I just want to give you a thumbs up. I appreciate you all. But tonight I want to share something with you that is awesome. I've got a lot of pages here, but I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't think I can. Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. There have been a couple other people that have popped in and out and they will come back. So tonight I want to share with you about the purpose of the king being in the field and why this is so important. This is the season where the king leaves his celestial throne and he goes out into the field and he does something. He mingles with the people and he begins to inquire as to what has been done with the things that he gave us to do. It could be the gifts. It could be the talents. It could be anything that God has told us to do. And he inquires of us to see what we're doing with it. And it compares to two parables that are in scripture. And the first one is the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house. The king goes into the field and sat by the lake. What was he doing? He was there presenting himself to a large crowd. This is what the king in the field does. He goes out into the arena where the people are and he presents himself there. And what he did in the scripture is large crowds gathered around him and he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore, meaning that they had to be where he could, they could be heard because being on the water was like a microphone today. Then he told them many things in parables saying a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But then the sun came up and the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times that was sown. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples came to him and asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? And he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more. And they that have in abundance, whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. 
very, very important because what's happening here in the scripture and what we're seeing here is that he put a demand on everything that he has given us so that we could come back to him and bring it back to him so that he could bless us 30, 60, or 100 fold. It's the same way with paying tithes. I know there's a lot of people that don't believe in paying tithes. I believe in paying tithes. Our church believes in paying tithes. But whatever you give and whatever you sow, you should be doing it in the name of the Lord. And therefore, he gives you back a reward 30 60 or a hundred fold this is what he does and in this season where the king is in the field he is looking to bless he is looking to see where the people are what they've done with what he's given them and he wants to bless us hallelujah i love this season because it's it's just so exciting he wants to bless us and as of september 1st uh, and there's 40 days until the next the next season. And so in this 40 day moment, God is literally lingering among us. He is literally his spirit is hovering. He is literally looking at us to see what we're doing with what he's given us so that he can bless us the 30, 60 or 100 fold. I don't know about you, but I am excited about that and I want to keep it. Those of you that are on Facebook, give me a thumbs up, do whatever you have to do, but let me know you're paying attention. Because what's happening is that God is wanting us to move and do on his behalf. I don't, I don't see that he is angry. I don't see that he is hostile. I don't see that he is arrogant in any way. Because when I look at the parable, the only thing he's doing is he's looking for what's his. And so what happens is in the midst of what is his, he is looking for his own reward. He is looking for his own ability to bless. What, you know, what kind of a, a brother would we have? What kind of a parent would we have if they didn't want to bless us? You know, and we have a great, big, wonderful, wonderful God that wants to bless us 30, 60, or a hundred fold. And I'm encouraged by that because the second parable that I want to share with you that correlates with the king that is in the field. See, he's not sitting on the throne, or am I? There. He's not sitting there. He's out in the field and he's looking to bless. When we go to Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, I'm not going to read them all. We now have another parable. And this is where I believe God wants us to understand what he's doing. For the kingdom of heaven is a like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered them his goods. And unto the five, now let, this is really cool. And oh, I just I just love this so much. And unto one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. So we are not locked into one thing. We are not locked into one purpose. We are not locked in to only one portion of destiny. We are literally locked in to the several different abilities that God has given us. This is why the gifts, plural, are called gifts. This is why talents are called talents. There's an S on the end of it because the plural, he's plural, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, plural. There's always more than one and one balances out the other. And I want to exhort you today to recognize that you may feel like you're in a season where something may not be working for you. You thought you've toiled at it and you've given and you've given and you've given, but this is the season where the king is in the field and he wants to bless you. He wants to bless us. He wants to bless me. He wants to bless whatever you've put your hand to because he loves you and it's his desire that you get blessed by him so he gave one five talents the other two and to another one every man according to his several ability and then straightway went on his journey what did the king do he poured out his spirit upon us and then he got to business and got to work 
He's done everything that his father has told him to do. He said, everything I hear my father say, I speak. I do what I see the father do. And that's what we are. We are just a conduit of eternity invading time so that God the father can be released through the presence of his son who can establish his works through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is so important because the Holy Spirit is our friend. He's our teacher and he's our guide. And he has come and he is moving mightily today. He is moving mightily today. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made five more talents. God wants to bless you with the gifts and talents that he's given you. You could have many different gifts of healing. You could have word of knowledge. You could have word of prophecy. You can have word of wisdom. All of them work together. Healing, there are different types of healing. There's emotional healing. There's physical healing. There's spiritual healing. There's many different types of healing. But what is God doing? God is putting a demand so to speak, on what he's given us so that he can bless us because it's his job to bless us. He said, you are blessed with the blessing. You are not going to be cursed. He said, I am with you wherever you go. He said, if you go this way, I'm with you. If you go that way, you're with me. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I have not walked away from you, says the Lord. And in this season of Yulel, and I don't care if I'm not pronouncing it right. I am in Chicago and I'm going to pronounce it the way that I can. But in this season where they Golly, glory, God, the king is in the field. It's in this season that there is going to be a blessing. It's in this season that we can look up to heaven and say, look, this is what I've done for you. I expect a blessing. This is where I have poured out and given. I am going to start looking for the blessing. I am going to start putting a demand on the blessing. I'm going to start putting a demand on myself to be a blessing. I am going to make sure that you, God, when you come into the field, and now the field is in your house, the field is in your prayer life, the field is in your church, the field is in the marketplace, every place that Jesus wants to set his spirit in high octane at this time of the year, he wants to bless. Ladies and gentlemen, he wants to bless you more than anything. He loves you with an everlasting love. He's given everything that he can give him. He will never give you anything more than what the scriptures say you can have. There is no extra biblical giving. It's all in there. The gifts, the talents, the parables, it's all in there for us to know what? That the kingdom of God is at hand. I believe that with my whole heart, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And we are in the season where the king is in the field. He is here. And he's blessing us. Today, we were in the garden. Now, I can't do much because I've just had major surgery, abdominal surgery. No, I didn't have cancer. I've had a lot of people call me up and say, I understand you have cancer. No, I didn't have cancer. I had a double strangulated internal hernia, which was very bad. And I had it for a very long time. But it just got to the point where it was either going to burst and I was going to die or I had to take care of it. So when I got in and had surgery... They said it was a miracle. So I'm a living, breathing miracle standing before you or actually sitting before you right now. And many of you prayed for me and I can't tell you how much I thank you for that. I just can't tell you. But I want to continue with this powerful where the king is in the field. We were in the gardens today and I turned to my husband and I said, I am so ashamed of myself. And he said, why would you be ashamed of yourself? And I said, because I could not do anything because I was too ill this whole summer. I could, I could barely water the gardens. I planted the seeds, but I couldn't, I couldn't tend the garden. And I was so devastated, just so completely devastated. And we were out there digging. Well, he was digging the potatoes and the carrots and the beets. We lost our bean crop. We lost most of our onion crop. 
because I couldn't tend to it like I normally do. And we get everything out of the ground. And I said, look at that. That's so much more than I thought we would have. Then he says to me, I know where there's a farm. And I'm like, yeah, when do we go? He says, we're going to go right now. So we came, got in the truck and we went to a farm stand and they saw me and I don't know what they were thinking. They must've saw me clutching my side because I've been in a lot of pain. And we were just kind of walking back and forth. When we went to the checkout, it was almost free. The mercy of God that was upon us because I have to get my crops in and get things ready for my family for the winter. I've done this for years. It's a mandate that's always been on my life. But here's what God spoke to me when I was getting ready for the broadcast. He said, you didn't stop preaching. You didn't stop praying. He said, you didn't stop working in your lab. He said, you did it. You got the product out. You got the broadcast halted, but you got the written word out. You kept global prophetic voice up. And I said, but God, I couldn't take care of my crop. He said, did I not say that the talents were multiple? And I'm like, yes, God, yes. And he began to show me that though I was not able to do what I thought I had to do, He's blessed me today with a farmer that did what I could have done. And the farmer gave it to us almost for free. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I felt the presence of God on it. I felt the presence of God with us when we went to that farm today. And I'm, I'm so encouraged by what God is doing that I encourage you to step up in this season. And don't think about like I was thinking of what I couldn't do. Think about the blessing of what you have done. You're a miracle. You are a blessing. You are God's child. You are someone he cares about. You carry the presence. You are being a lifter of the head. You are God's glory. You are God's handmaiden. You are God's farmer. You. And I want to encourage you in that today. And I want to continue on. But he that only received one talent went and digged it in the earth and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord whose servants cometh and reckon with him. And so he that had received five talents came and brought him another five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more. And what did the Lord say unto him? He said, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will now make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also had two, he who also had two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. And the Lord said unto him, well done, good, faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of, the, of thy Lord. Then he which received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou wert a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strung. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. And there it was to shine, and the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not and gathered where I have not sowed. Ladies and gentlemen, you still have time to sow. You still have time to reap. You don't have to worry about the one gift you were prophesied over. Move into the other things that you know you can do so that the one gift that you might have been prophesied over that you've been waiting to come to pass or the one calling or the one of this or the one of that, stop right there and realize that it is his preference to give you more than one. I'm going to give you a testimony of a lady that I loved very much. She was in our church and she was a fabulous artist. I mean, her artwork was amazing. She even designed her house and built her house herself. She knew exactly what she wanted. She had a vision from God and she followed through on it. 
but she also painted on canvas. And one day she came to the church and she showed us the paintings and they were phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I said to her, I said, do you know, God really has a desire to use your artwork to win the masses. That woman turned on me, basically cussed me out and said, this is not from God. This is for me. And I will never, ever use it for God. And I'm tired of every church I go into that the pastor is telling me that my gift is from God. And I just looked at her and I said, I'm so sorry you feel that way because God loves your artwork. She never came back. Well, I saw her again later and I was with my secretary and we were at a major conference and there she was, that beautiful artistic lady. She was down in the front at the conference and she had her hands high in the air and she was worshiping the Lord. And I turned to my secretary and I said, look at her hands. And she just gasped. They were black. And at first, I really, at first I thought, well, maybe she'd been doing some artwork and she spilled ink or whatever on her hands. But the more I looked at it, the more I saw a dark shadow on her hands. Ladies and gentlemen, that woman is no longer on the earth. She cursed the very thing God gave her. You might be a fabulous cook. That's a gift. You might be one that can read stories out loud to children. That's a gift. You might be the one that's the Anna in the church. You could be the one that's cleaning the church. You could be the one that is doing something that other people may not think is a gift from God. And yet it is because everything is a talent from God. Everything that you have, you might sing a good song and you may think, I can't sing in the worship team, but what if you're singing at home? God's blessing you. He's loving you with that. He's pouring out his heart to you. Maybe you're singing the song of the Lord, which is exactly what was on God's heart at the time. Oh my goodness, how glorious would that be? And yet we run. We run from God. I ran from God. I'll never forget the day I heard an audible voice in the roof of the church calling me into the ministry. And I turned around, to see who God could be talking to, because obviously he couldn't be talking to me because I was a woman and I was petite and I was not able to do anything. My family wasn't walking with God the way everybody else's family was walking with God. And there was no way God could use me. So I just said, nope, I'm not going to do that. Well, about seven or eight months later, the pastor had the audacity to preach the story of Jonah and the whale. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. He's going to preach Jonah and the whale. Saturday night, the night before, I got a phone call from somebody in the church and said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm sitting in the bathtub. I mean, this is when you had long cords. You didn't have mobile phones. Ladies, I've been in the ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been in the ministry 36 years. Hello. Through it all, I've tried to be faithful. Have I made mistakes? I've made Tons of mistakes, but God was faithful. Now I want to tell you something. When I told that lady I was sitting in the bathtub, she said, well, did you know that a huge giant fish could come up out of that drain? I hung up the phone. I was like, you know, I don't want to hear that. The next day, the pastor starts preaching Jonah and the whale. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the meantime, my son was praying, mom, would you please become my pastor? Would you? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I can't do that. That's not going to happen. Mom can't do that. Mom was raised Church of England. We don't do that. No, your dad was Roman Catholic. We don't do that. Women don't do that. And he said, oh, yes, you do, Mom. I said, no, no, we don't. He came and brought me the book of Third John, Second or Third John, where, it's, where Paul wrote the letter to to Gaius, the woman and her church. And he goes, mom, I read this in school today. That was a woman pastor. And I, I got so angry with him. Well, the pastor gets up and he starts preaching Joan and the whale and the pastor's wife reaches behind the pew and she grabs a hold of the hem of my skirt. Yeah, that was back in the days we wore dresses to church and honored the house of the Lord without coming in ripped jeans and all this other stuff. 
I'm telling you, if somebody came and ripped jeans when I was a brand new Christian, we all took up an offering and got them clothes. We did. We got them clothes. We would buy them clothes. You know, we would do that. If we heard somebody's stomach growling in church, we'd take up an offering that night and we'd get groceries to their house. We did things like that. And um, very rarely did anybody ever wear uh, long pants and shorts to church. It was just very rare, except for a prayer meeting, we would do that, but we never did that during the service. So she reached over and she grabbed the hem of my skirt and I'm thinking, oh God, I'm going to run away. I'm, I'm not going to have any part of this. This is done. And so he got done preaching that morning on Joan and the Whale and I got up and walked out the door and I thought, oh, hallelujah. I went home and my son says, mom, we're going back to church tonight. And I said, oh, no, we're not, not tonight because part two was coming. And he goes, yeah, mom, we're going to do that. And so who am I to tell my child, my nine or 10 year old child that I'm not going to take him to church. If he wants to go, I'm going to be smart enough to take him to church. So we went to church that night. Pastor gets up and says, I'm preaching part two and I'm looking right at the people that are running from God. And I'm looking around to see who he could possibly be looking at. And again, the pastor's wife reaches over the back of the pew and she puts her hand on the hem of my skirt. And she looks at me and she goes, pastor wants to see you after church tonight. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what did I do? Well, after church, he, when he got done ministering, he walked over to me. He says, I'll see you in my office in five minutes. I thought, what did I do? Well, there was a lady in the church that a lot of people would come over to the house after church and we'd have tea and cookies and whatnot, maybe finger sandwiches after church on Sunday night. And she says, I'm going to take your son home. I'll meet you at the house. Okay. And my son's like, aha, mom, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're going to the pastor's office. I'm like, thanks a lot, son. Well, I ended up in the pastor's office and the pastor said to me, when are you going to tell your family that you're called into the ministry and it's high time you do it because you're absolutely miserable? I said, I can't do that. I said, I, I can't do that because if I do, my family will have nothing to do with me. They don't believe in that. This is not going to happen. He said, you go home. I said, they'll kill me. And you know what he had the nerve to say to me? He said, if they kill you and you have a funeral, I'll come in and lock the door and make sure I preach the best salvation message and they won't leave until they're all saved and you will have fulfilled the call of God on your life. There was no running away at this point. Now, up until this point, I was growing herbs. I was growing flowers. I was giving them to the pastor every week. I was giving my potatoes, eggs out of the chicken coop. I was giving them all to the pastor. Every week I'd bring him something out of the garden, not because I wanted anything from him, but that was my tithe. I would bring my tithe of my food and my, my garden things into the church because I didn't have any money. And um, he looked at me one day and he says, are you tithing? And I said, yes, I am. Well, he started giving it away to members in the congregation, which I was happy with. But what happened was God called and a pastor backed me and I stepped out. And 36 years later, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still here. Am I perfect? No. My mom and dad are the only ones and my aunt and uncle were the only ones that ever came to hear me preach. Nobody else in my family ever came, but it didn't stop me. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't hide your talent because you're afraid of the ground that you're walking on. And I prophesy to you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our savior, our King that is in the field. He wants to bless you for all that you have done because he honors you because it's him inside of you that he's looking to bless. And I encourage you this night, if you can do it, get to that point where you're not afraid to get on your knees. 
and cry out to God and say, I know what you showed me to do and I didn't do it and ask him to forgive you. God, I did this instead of that. Let God bless you for what you did do. Let him bless you for what you did do. God, I missed the mark and I did something else. He's still going to bless you. He's not going to condemn you. He's not going to throw you to the wolves. He's going to say, here I am. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I am with you wherever you go and wherever you've been. If you're a child of the most high God, you are not alone. In anything that you do, you're not alone. Sitting there watching television by yourself, you're not alone. Singing a song by yourself, you're not alone. You are highly favored because in the season where it appears that everything's gone dry and you feel like you're in the dark night of the soul is when God cherishes your tears and he pours out blessings. This is the season where the king is in the field. And don't walk away from this season. Don't let the politics of the day throw you into something apart from who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. I know of a young man today that was preaching in the glory, very anointed of the Lord. And an angel came to him and said, stop what you're doing right now because you're talking politics too much. And I want you to get back in your lane. And he did. You see, we sometimes have to realize that he's going to come and correct us and that he's going to tell us what we need to do and what's right and what's wrong. Because that's what the Bible does. It tells us what's right and what's wrong. It doesn't talk politics. It talks love, repentance, forgiveness, and a hope for a future. God bless you. I hope you got something out of this message today. I'm going to invite all of you, if you want to undo your cameras and come in, please do. But I encourage you today, while the king is in the field, receive your blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any of you want to come in, you can. I'm going to open it up. Let's see how I can do this. I'm not very good at this. I just unmute, unmute. If you want to come in, you can. If you don't want to come in, you don't have to, but you can undo your camera. You can undo. Hi, Regina. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, I love your hair. It's beautiful. Yeah, un Unmute yourself, Michelle. There you go. Hey, Carolyn, if you want to come in, come in. Regina, how are you? You're can't you're you're muted, Regina. Oh, I'm back. Oh, very good. I'm okay. I'm doing well. I just felt dizzy uh, this weekend, and we came from uh, a retreat, evangelism retreat. Uh huh. And uh, I was so dizzy, I couldn't drive, and Ooh. I prayed, and I managed. I felt good, and then I came back yesterday uh what was that sunday and today i feel again dizzy so i have to improve my eating and do my exercises because that's the thing which i go through sometimes well maybe perhaps okay. you need some electrolytes <laughs> <laughs> amen you know sometimes yeah, we just get dehydrated maybe you know you never know I don't know. I've been drinking. Yeah, sometimes I forget and do other things. And Well, I just yeah. pray right now in the name of Jesus for Thank that you. vertigo, that dizziness, whatever that may be. I pray mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch the chemical 
in her brain. Bring that into alignment, her ears into alignment, God, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. I just pray that you stop the dizziness in her life cool. in the name of Jesus and get her to be able to focus properly and hinder <sighs> her from driving ever again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. How are you, Michelle? I'm good. Can I share something? Yes, please do. Okay. So I live in Wisconsin and I heard you speak up at Valley Harvest Church. Yes, I love that Bible. place. Yeah, okay, I love that I to, place. I used to go up there and I brought my um granddaughter, my husband and I brought our granddaughter at that time, and you prayed over her. Um and it's been a real war over her life. Aww. Like I hadn't seen her for the past six years. I hadn't seen her at all. And then I hadn't really seen her. Um, there was a big custody battle between my daughter and her father. And um, so basically, I hadn't seen her since she was five, really. She lived oh my with goodness. Her for the first four years of her life yeah so you got you prayed with her before she ended up being taken basically uh -huh. so um I just wanted to share that such a God story how she came back into our life it was totally a God story we had people who had visions when she left it was one of the intercessors in my church said he's you know well I don't want to say it but he had a vision of her which totally came to pass and Praise so I just, God. I just went out to dinner with her tonight and she's going to college now and she's very gifted I mean she's always been super gifted and my daughter was a single mom so when I hear of people who want to abort their babies now look at this child here who is so gifted she plays the piano oh, guitar wow. flute now she's in theater she just got a part in her college theater a performance and I said did you know that and the name of it is beautiful and one of my pastor's wives when she was young before she was even born had the prophetic word over her beautiful I shared that, that that's with her. Glorious. <laughs> that was that's glorious. glorious. Awesome. What, what did you get out of tonight's message? Well, <laughs> I know the Lord's really been lately. I felt like the Lord pulled me out of the church way back, like in before COVID. So he sort of had me in what I call the cave, um, just where I'm doing prayer walking all the time. I still watch like glory of zion every sunday i do the internet but i feel lately like he wants to pull me back into the church well then so find this, one this, pardon then find one yeah so i i i had this list i actually went into the secret place i'm like okay lord i got 10 different ones here which <laughs> one <laughs> and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be obedient because I feel like, like Chuck Pierce said on, on Sunday, that people have been having their nets repaired, you know, so that they can get back in the boat with Jesus, which there's been a lot of things being repaired. My yes, son true. lives with us now. My, my daughter's talking to me. My granddaughter just came back and my life. God. He's pulling all of these broken relationships, getting them back and mended. So that whatever it ha he has in store for me, I believe he wants to use me in a church corporate setting. Well, praise so. the Lord, because the Lord spoke to me a while back and said that a lot of people that had left the body of Christ, they hadn't actually left the body of Christ, but they left fellowship in the house of God. Mm -hmm. He said they're coming home. And mm -hmm. he told me that. So you 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 just confirmed that. Because the Bible said, go and compel that his house would be full. And the reason he wants, the reason he's compelling us to do that is because we are stronger in numbers. We're mm -hmm. stronger. 
And so we have to become very strong in the days and weeks and months ahead because we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we know, and I, I'm not saying this to be political in any way, but we know that the one world order is trying to force its way in and it's just not God's timing. And we could stand back and say, well, we'll just wait on God. But no, we have to do our part. We have to make sure that if that eastern sky is going to split and he's going to come out of that sky with a shout and a bang and the shout of the archangel, I want my whole family going with me. <laughs> I'm not leaving them behind, you know? No. I want I want my whole block to go with yes. me. I want, I want my whole city to go with me. Yes, you know? yes. So, yeah, I just am so honored that you shared that, Michelle, because... It's true. People are being pulled back where they belong. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, I have a friend of mine, born again, spirit filled, on fire for God, had left the church due to some circumstances. And she found her way back into the Catholic church. And now she's in the Catholic church under a, a charismatic, born again, spirit filled priest who is now exercising the gifts of God and she's involved with that. And she said, she's never felt more at home. And it is because this group in the Catholic church has embraced the fullness of the spirit, which is wonderful. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you never know where God might put you to be a blessing. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's true what you say, because um, you mentioned like a lot of things and I, I'm, you know, about people having different gifts. And my whole life, I've been like a foodie person. I've been like a cook or whatever. So oh, I felt God. like I went to a conference at Valley Harvest. I came back that was a whole weekend conference. This was years ago. And I felt like the Lord said, feed my sheep and that you will soon own your own business. And then my husband had a dream. We were in a restaurant up in northern Wisconsin that we were the owners of that restaurant. And so he's had me on this recipe project for two, two years or more. Wonderful. All I've been doing is typing recipes. And I want computer. a copy of the book. <laughs> so I, either I'm going to be doing a cookbook or I'm going to be doing something to feed Maybe you're going to be teaching this younger generation that has done nothing but eat McDonald's and everything else how to cook. But in the meantime, write those down and make that book. I want a copy yeah, of that right. book. <laughs> and it's been very time consuming because I was doing 30 recipes a week, typing them in. Oh. And then my son helps me put them on cards. I get them in the computer. And I, I keep hearing him tell me, keep typing, keep typing the rest, keep typing. It's very time consuming. So I know that somehow this gift, like you said something today, I wrote it down. You said um, that <laughs> you said, um, here, hold on. Because <laughs> I was actually doing this today. You said, we are God's farmer. <laughs> so what did I do today? I went to two different farmers, picked up <laughs> groceries for my daughter because they're very struggling financially for with food. Got her, went to this farmer, <laughs> got, got her food, took her to the pantry, got her food. And we went to another farmer, got her more food. <laughs> so it's like, okay. So hey, I guess I am a farmer today. <laughs> yeah, this is what you do. Like I was so beside myself. Because when I looked at the the not good part of the some of the crop, um, and it was there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't realize how sick I had been and what I had been through, and um, I just couldn't do it. Every time I went out to try to do it, I just I looked at it. And I said, I just don't have the strength. Forgive me, God. And I went back in the house. Well, today. I mean, yesterday we pulled out about 30 pounds of potatoes. Today, maybe about 10 pounds of carrots. Um, I threw all the beets away. I, you know, we pulled up some onions, but we lost most of that because it got washed out in too much rain while we were gone. And um, there was nothing I could do. And so, you know, I cried to God out of it. And here, we, my husband says, I know where there's a farmer's market. I go, market? or farm stand. 
And he said, well, I know where the farm stand is. I said, well, let's go. And he got me right in the car and I'm sitting there holding my side going, okay, let's go. Just don't do any bumps in the road. You know, <laughs> I don't want to feel any bumps in the road. And he found the biggest bump in the road. And we get there and they, I mean, they were charging a dollar an onion. That's a lot of money for an onion. I'm sorry. And I told uh, Rob, I said, I'm not paying a dollar an onion. I said, I'm, I'm not going to do that. For I can go to Aldi's and for a dollar, I can get 10 of them. I said, I'm not going to do that. And, um, you know, he looked around, picked up a couple other things. And I said, I'm just going to pick up this and that. And he said, fine. We get to go pay for it. And it was almost free. They just about gave it to us. I felt like we were just giving them a token of what they were asking in the price, but they were wonderful. They were talking about how, you know, where they struggled this summer in their garden, where it was good, where it wasn't good. And I just want to say praise the Lord because I couldn't do it. I cried out to God. I did the best I could, but I didn't stop some of the other things that God had me doing, but I couldn't do that. And in the meantime, God blessed us today with the very thing that I felt the most shame over, <laughs> because if anybody came to my house and saw the gardens, they'd go, ooh, that's not very pretty at all, <laughs> you know, but we did get food out of it. And I'm grateful. And I'd rather go to the farm stands than what's in most of the grocery stores anyway. Right. You know? But be blessed. Well, I, can, I can relate to you because I had a rose garden for at least 20 years I had over 40 roses and I just got to the point where I physically couldn't do it anymore so we, <laughs> with my son's help we dug all those bushes out I gave some to friends then we planted a garden garden in there and that was even too much so now we just hired somebody and they planted bushes in there that we don't have to do anything. With. Oh, nice. <laughs> they are even an irrigation system, so we don't even have to water them. So I'm like, I'm, I I can relate to that because yeah. I've done all this gardening stuff and I even still have the effects of the trigger thumb from that. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I like getting my hands in the dirt and I, I like being able to do it. It's just that this year just was not it. And so instead of beating myself up, I, I just want to say, thank you, God. One, my life was spared because I could have died from this thing. And two, I still got a harvest. It may not have been the biggest harvest, but I got some kind of a harvest. And so I can say, God, you're not going to tell me to give it to somebody else because that's what he said in the parable. He said, you have to take what you wouldn't do for me and give it to someone else. And I believe that the grace of God is so great and wonderful upon us this day that he is saying, no matter what you've done, no matter what mistake you made, just repent, get up and get going again, because he's in the field right now, helping us. And I'm going to say this, when we left that farm today, and we were driving down another road I hadn't been on in a long time. I said, look at the corn, look at the corn. And my husband says, why? And I said, that's going to be a very early harvest because it's almost ready. And this is September. And I was like, whoa, you know, and that went with the word that we had in church that the, that fall would come early and there would be an early snow. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, I, just looking at that corn confirmed it today mm -hmm. so i was just i'm just praising the lord i'm praising the lord that i made it through <laughs> and regina you're gonna make it through too you're not gonna have to have those problems anymore amen amen well i'm gonna amen. say that does anybody have anything else to say uh, before we leave tonight uh just pray for my finances because i want to go on mission trip to oh, Zambia. where are you going? Zambia. Um, my sister died who was working oh. at the mission. And uh, we, we had about 5,000 children at school. Mm -hmm. And we helped the widows and the orphans. So since she died in February, I haven't been because of finances. And we have some projects which are standstill. So I'm hoping when I go, I'll have enough money to 
to finish those projects which she left. So well, let's pray. Let's pray, Lord, in yeah. the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know her Thank heart you, is to go and be a blessing. You know, yeah. Lord, every need she has in order to go. Lord, yes, Lord. I'm asking you to meet that need. You mm -hmm. said when we sow, we get back 30, 60, or 100 fold. Yes, you Lord. said that, Lord. That's your word, not mine, mm -hmm. God. That's your word. And so, yes, Lord, Lord, she has sown. And we ask yeah. you, God, in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus, in the spirit of grief and mourning with the loss mm -hmm. of her sister, I ask you to touch and heal her. Mm -hmm. I ask you to remove the grief you, in the name of Jesus. Yes, and I ask you, God, to bless Regina. Mm -hmm. And I ask you to bless her with health, mm -hmm. wealth, and sustainability. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sonia, how are you? Amen. amen. Thank you. You are welcome. How are you, Sonia? Oh, Sonia froze. Sonia froze. I don't know their connection tonight is not real good, so I do apologize to everyone. Oh, hey, Sonia, you're trying to move there. I can almost see you moving. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just come back from my driving lease, and that's hence why I'm in the car. <laughs> okay. Well, I want you to go back and look at this. It'll be on Facebook because um, yeah. we're just closing out now. But go back and look at this, and then I want you to comment on it and let me know what you think. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. That's cool. Okay. But um, but it's so cool that you're a lot better now, and 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 you're coming right from whatever it was. That, when it's all the healing that you've had, it's, you know, it's it's been rough. We've had we're working on our fifth funeral. My mother in law is passing away as we speak, and um, it's it hasn't been easy since June. And I had major surgery, but I came through it. And our service dog is more like my companion dog than anything because she's with me all the time. So I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah. And thank you. Because I know a lot of you prayed when I put that out there. I could feel it. And when I, you know, people were contacting me thinking that I had cancer, but I didn't have cancer. I just, you know, I had the other issue, but I just thank you for that, Sonia. Thank you so much for your love and all of you for your love and prayers. And so I'm going to close with prayer and I'm going to ask God to bless us. And I want to touch everyone that's been on this broadcast tonight and uh -huh. those that have been watching on Facebook. We've had several on Facebook. And I ask you, God, touch, mend, restore, reconcile, and let them finish their race and not be afraid. Uh -huh of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye now. Everybody walk with the king. See a blessing. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.